So yeah, we, we talk about like uh, in this API product and API driven business approach, we talk especially about uh, like uh, how to think internally about building APIs, having them as a product. But there's, there's an important aspect, which is also the distribution and monetization. And this is why we wanted uh, to have a, uh, uh, speakers explicitly on, on that topic, which is uh, uh, a topic about going to market with APIs. And for that, we have uh, Emmalin Wang, Emmalin Wang, as uh, uh, we call them, uh, who is the global lead DevOps AWS marketplace. Uh, hello, I'm Emmalin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Uh, the event is going really well, and we're really glad to hear you about going to market with APIs. Sounds wonderful. Um, if you can give me a moment, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with just sharing. So um, my that, apologies there. I'm trying no, to share it and- No, it happens. Okay. Yeah. Why we should have any technical issues with physical events, not online events, right? Yes, it's true. Yeah. It so, yeah, I was gonna mention, what's the best way for me to do it? Do you mind if I try to up to another um, screen here to try. Yes, so we are live and you have a share button. You have a share button below below our two photos, right below. And with yes. the share, you will be able to share either your screen or the... Sure, yeah, it's asking me to reload one. Yeah, please reload. So Emmaline is, is, is coming back. And so if you have any questions about like API, market strategy, distribution, monetization, don't hesitate to uh, uh, to add them in the chat. I will be glad to ask them to uh, to Emmaline. Um, yeah, especially if you are an AWS user. Can Sounds you try again, Emmaline? Yes, Mehdi, can you see the screen? Uh, yes, we can see the screen. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you for your patience with me. I appreciate it. Uh, oh. I'm so delighted to join everyone here at API Days Interface in the API product track. Uh, my name is Emmeline, and I'm located in um, Dallas, Texas, originally from Austin, Texas. And today I'm going to talk to you about go to market and specifically what does that mean for APIs? So what it means if, is that intentionally people, APIs and integrations are aligned. So you've already built on top of right, your solution to where, you know, say today you work with mobile teams, you work with the internal application team, you work with customers and partners, and you're already building your solution. Then what happens is, of course, you'll communicate what you've built and how that benefits customers. And finally, because you've done this and you've aligned in the beginning, when you sell it, then you have alignment between um, people and technology. And I will um, dig into that a little bit. So I wouldn't be able to be here at API Days if it weren't for the amazing um, uh, independent software vendors and companies here uh, at this event today in the areas of full lifecycle API management, integration, low and no code application development, automation, and modernization. So just to give you an example, Companies like Tipco and Kong, Software AG, and Type Technologies, and Nginx, and many more, which you can find on the AWS Marketplace today. So let's talk about a live poll that I ran right before API uh, Day's um, interface. So what happened was I was kind of trying to understand from the community, if you could do one role, Right. So say we broke out API management and you could uh, work on one role, which one would you be interested in? And it was very exciting to see that people were choosing from designing APIs, building APIs, monetizing APIs and integrating APIs. Right. Because these are kind of the areas that I wanted to, to focus on today. And so it started off with 43 percent of people really interested in you know how do you monetize your APIs and working in roles where you know you bring that experience or maybe you're interested in doing a role where you do that. And then when the poll ended, you know, we saw that monetizing APIs uh, you know continued to lead. And then we had a response that said, hey, you know, I really feel like these things are all part of managing APIs. And so that's where I wanted to talk about kind of that iceberg model with a new sort of way of looking at things. Beyond mountains, there are mountains. This is an, a Haitian proverb, and it basically just talks about how 
as you solve one problem, another presents itself. And so you go on to try to solve that one too. And that's by a Pulitzer Prize winning author, Tracy Kidder. And this reminded me about the fact that you really need to be brave um, when you introduce or when you're working with the existing APIs or you want to introduce an API program into the company, especially if it is not a, you know, a company or an organization that views itself as a tech company, right? It takes a lot of bravery to, to understand how to problem solve. And this remember this reminded me of the days when DevOps as a practice and a culture didn't exist. When we were working with a monolithic development life and right, we didn't have um, quick releases to production. And that was definitely you know, an issue to where we were able to move to a microservices architecture and you know, rapidly have APIs being um, published. And so that's why I was going to talk about how in the DevOps practice, it's not just what you traditionally think of as tools, right? It's that culture. It's being able to innovate more quickly and being able to see and know where your APIs are so that you can secure them. And just also talk about the fact that sometimes people say, oh, you know, Amazon seems like, you know, it's part of big tech. When in reality, you know, it's small pizza, uh, two pizza teams, right? Meaning teams that could be fed by two pizzas that are developing those microservices. And so I wanted to relate that DevOps story before and after to the concept of API ops, where it's not just about the tools, it's about the culture. And so back in the day, you know, before DevOps existed, what happened was, right, people, developers, enterprise architects are writing code, you kind of throw it over at the wall, right? And you want it to, to get into production and that caused a lot of friction. And so we had to find a new way of working to where now, right, dev and ops, you work together. Same thing with DevSecOps, right? To where you don't slow things down, but you, you do make sure that you're moving at the, uh, a, you know, a fast pace but you're also not compromising things like security. And so I wanted to apply that to the concept of going to market with APIs because you need to plan the APIs and the integration to be friendly to both the human elements and to the automation that drives that. And so I hope this you know, sounds familiar, right? When we were talking about um, DevOps. The other thing I wanted to mention is when you go to market using you know, API ops, which is just taking lean and agile development and DevOps concepts and applying it to how you create APIs, that that then helps you with choice, governance, speed, visibility, and, and I'll talk about what these things mean. So a quote that goes with the concept of bravery when designing and going to market with APIs. And right action is freedom from past and future also. For most of us, this is the aim never here to be realized, who are only undefeated because we have gone on trying. So many of us who've been working in the field of designing, building, and going to market with APIs, it took quite a bit of um, empathy, right, for the stakeholders that we know will be using our APIs, both inside the company and outside of the company. And so I wanted to just be encouraging to each of you as, you know, as, as your practitioners that, you know, continue, don't give up, right? Keep trying because that's how we make sure we're designing the right APIs to where, you know, we continue to upgrade the design of the API so that, you know, the very end user experience and everyone downstream and upstream has a good experience. And finally, I was gonna talk a little bit about the role of the AWS marketplace. So that's one of the 200 cloud native services at AWS. And, and that's the one that, you know, I have the delight to work on. And the reason why it exists is customers wanted a way um, to be able to help customers. So basically, you know, customers helping customers, right? So they're customers of AWS. And so what happens is if there's a solution that's built on AWS, then the customers of Marketplace will be able to purchase those solutions from AWS Marketplace. And so my particular charge, if there's a developer or an end customer looking to purchase an API management integration or low code solution on AWS, that that healthy selection is there. 
And the reason why we do that is, as we know that you know more people are growing the portfolio of the types of solutions that you're using to build APIs, to publish APIs, to secure APIs, and to do integration, that it becomes harder to manage that. And so the AWS Marketplace basically offers consolidated billing in a way for companies to manage you know, that, that offering, right? A lot of companies have up to 10,000 licenses. And it's one of the services that basically helps everyone from you and me, um, end users, you know, purchasing software, but also services, but all the way up to, you know, very large complex companies um, to be able to procure software and professional services faster. And so I was just gonna talk a, a little bit about how that works, right? So when you go to market, what happens is um, you can either click to subscribe your favorite solution, or say there's a product that you love or your team loves to use it and you wanna make sure that your company adopts it and you can actually go onto the AWS marketplace and work with your procurement team to be able to buy that product at scale for your company. And so that's something that's incredibly exciting because I know that oftentimes that's very difficult to do. Um, I've done that in my past roles where, you know, I was using a product to test an API or to, to try an API and I found that it was very effective. You know, I wanted to be able to use that more globally around my company and, you know, I didn't know how to make it happen. And so this catalog is, is, is um, a great way to make it happen. And so the other thing I was going to mention is, um, you can flip it on the other side, right? So say you are a developer or a company and you offer an API platform or a solution and say you've just got you know, many subscribers, many users, you've got a very healthy ecosystem, you've got developer advocates, but you're trying to figure out, okay, so the developer that is using this platform, it's very likely that um, you know, they work at a company that we're trying to reach. Right, so we wanna make sure we're giving that organization the very best deal. And so that's another way where you can use AWS Marketplace to reach that community, as well as show the great results that developer advocates and um, for example, software uh, technology evangelists, right, that are doing things like digital transformation, you can attribute and show the kind of impact that you're having, um, you know, for both communities as well as for organizations. And I was going to check with the production team. How am I doing on time? Sounds like it's good. Okay, great. So I was going to go on to say that um, Marketplace is a digital curated catalog. And today we have 310 active monthly customers with 2 million subscriptions. It's deployed in 24 regions. And what's incredibly exciting is say you're a company that's you know really popular in a region in the globe. And one of your strategies is you want to reach more people globally, then Marketplace is a great place to do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is there are 50 categories on Marketplace that go vertically as well as um, across different industries such as financial services. So think of open banking solutions and um, think of you know, trying to connect together all of your IoT products. Um, and then there's also solutions on the marketplace that complement you know, many different API gateways, including the Amazon API gateway. And so offering choice, I think, is really important. And so that's why I'm really grateful you know, for everyone here at the conference that is doing an amazing job of building solutions you know, that help us to better manage integrations, to build better mobile apps, and to kind of help the world at large you know, as we've been adjusting to having more of a digital lifestyle. And then the other piece that I was going to mention is governance. So as you can see, many of the different types of solutions that I've been mentioning, right? You don't want, for example, someone to be, you know, purchasing a tool, right? Maybe just using a trial, 
um, to build a project, right, that's going to be launched at an at an enterprise level, right? And so it's it's fantastic to use Marketplace to be able to have a centralized um, repository to be able to see both your AWS cloud native services as well as third party ISV solutions and the services. The other thing I was going to mention is typically the system integrator or the global system integrator is managing the AWS account on behalf of some of your customers. And so it's very easy for you to be able to authorize that consulting partner or solution partner to resell your particular product. Um, that's very attractive, right? Because the customer is already very happy with that managed service provider. And now um, you're able to do something called a consulting offer or a solution partner private offer, either with you know a local or a global system integrator. And the final thing I was going to mention is um, everything that I've talked about, you know, going to market with APIs, it's all about the fact that you need to continue to try new things. Right, you, you need to continue to try not only different tools, but different ways of building inside of your company that truly differentiates how you are serving your customers. And the more that you do that, the more that you transform, you know, kind of the, your tech stack, right, using a tool like AWS Marketplace, the more you're able to reach an incredibly diverse audience of people who want to use your products and services that that maybe you know you don't know is a market for your products and services and your APIs today. And in the thing that I wanted to close with here is you know there's such an untapped community of um, users that want to reach likely your product. And as mentioned, right, that developer or that employee of a company, you know, it's very likely that they're working at a company or an organization that your sales, um, you know, organization is trying to reach. And so being able to offer something like a free trial um, expedites, right? What we see today is I think it's like 92% of customers have already done so much homework, right, before. Um, they they start talking to a salesperson to be able to make that um, purchasing decision. This just allows you to be uh, faster. So, for example, a lot of companies have very complex procurement processes, and the only way that they do purchase is through the marketplace. And so what's incredibly exciting is your company can actually sell the, the way that they normally would, but marketplace just helps to you know, enlarge that deal size and also help it to close a little bit faster. And this is exciting, especially if you're a startup or, you know, you're someone with an idea and you want to test and you want to gain a user base, you know, to use your platform to get feedback, right, to continually improve it. And Marketplace is a great way to get, um, you know, eyes on your product, especially uh, you know, customers where they're already using AWS cloud native services and your particular product has a strong entry point uh, with the cloud native services. And so I just wanted to make sure that uh, if there's any questions, you know, feel free to connect with me. I'm very active on um, Twitter as well as the API ops community Slack. Um, there was a, a member who asked about the difference between DevOps and API ops, and I hope that I did a good job of answering that question. And if anyone else has any other questions about, you know, how API ops and DevOps are similar, or, you know, wants to talk a little bit more about what go-to-market with APIs looks like, um, please do uh, let me know. And I wanted to see if Mehdi or anyone had any questions from the audience. Yes. So um, we had a question actually about like, so does sure. that mean? Yeah. So, so does that mean that, uh, so uh, just to, to, to understand, do you still have some content to share or it was just a, a, check, a checkpoint? Um, well, I can share content based on any questions people have to better illustrate it, if that helps. Yeah, so we, we had questions mostly about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the distribution and also how does that look like to distribute your service over a AWS marketplace? Like what's the, 
the product page in we say uh, like that what does that look like sure so it's a public product page and so what happens is and uh, you know people can put their logo and a description of the product as well as data sheets videos it shows g2 crowd reviews because there's an integration already with marketplace as well as aws customers can post their reviews and so think of it as a public storefront and then um, you can either click to subscribe or right negotiate a private offer directly with the the software provider and then what happens is you can you know go ahead and deploy the software if it's a SaaS offering, then you would continue sign up with the seller as you normally would. But if it's running inside your virtual private cloud, such as using something like a container listing or an Amazon machine image, then it would deploy in other ways. Also, the question is like, do you need to be on AWS cloud to, 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 be, uh, to be able to uh, uh, integrate the AWS marketplace? Oh, yes, that's a wonderful question. Yes, a portion of the solution should be running on AWS. How do you set up the, uh, the payment option and, uh, and, um, and the business model? Sure, so it's very easy. It depends on how the, um, you know, the, the customer, or how, sorry, how the seller, the ISV wants to package the product. And so, meaning you can start with anything as simple as a bring your own license all the way up to pay as you go. And you can also offer like multi-year contracts. And so, meaning the business model is something, it depends on how you offer it today as a company. You can replicate that same model on Marketplace and it just takes a one-time integration with one of our APIs such, such as the billing or the entitlements API. So how granular can be uh, the, the pay-as-you-go options? It can be as granular as you would like for it to be, right? So for example, the seller sets it, right? So, so say, they, say they, they want it to be, right? It, it'll show, right? For example, um, it, you would pay for the product itself, and then it would show what the EC2 costs are. OK, OK. So it's a, it's a augmented. Amazon Web Services uh, product uh, with your service on top of it, right? And kind of. Kind of, yeah. And and as mentioned, it's going to be different, right? If it's a SaaS listing, then it would just run as the seller currently runs it. And then Marketplace is truly just the billing mechanism. Okay. And so how deep is the, uh, the, the seller infos added? Uh, so does that mean that if I set up something on AWS Marketplace, and someone is already a user or a registered AWS user, it's done, right? I don't have any billing or invoicing to do. So I see what you mean. If it's an existing customer and you would like for them, to, so basically the AWS Marketplace facilitates both new and existing customers. And so what Marketplace essentially does is provides the benefit of the consolidated billing to the customer. And always, whether or not on Marketplace or not, the agreement is between the ISV and the customer directly, where Marketplace is the billing mechanism. OK, uh, so that was the question mostly we had so far. So I don't know if you, maybe, uh, if you have uh, some more content to share. I do. I do, yes. Yeah. Yeah, please Thank go. you so much, Mehdi. So I was going to finish with the fact that go to market with APIs um, means that even though we don't initially tout AWS Marketplace as a demand gen engine, it truly is. So AWS Marketplace on a global level drives traffic to the categories and you know, does joint marketing right with the sellers who are on AWS Marketplace. And what's really exciting about that is you know, that means things like you know, webinars, hands-on workshops, labs, and um, being able to go together, and also for you know that collateral and you know that type of information to learn more about you know your particular product or API or even you know your data set, for customers to really focus on what your solution solves. And then, as mentioned earlier, attribution is incredibly important. And so today, what's exciting is you you'll be able to see you know, exact results from any campaign that you run. 
Um, so for example, you can also see, right, if the, the free trial is being influenced by the AWS marketplace. And so for the call to action is for um, APIs, platforms, people, and getting products through the ecosystem. And then I actually have several companies that I would like to thank where we are doing this today. So this is not all inclusive, but I will just um, name them through. So starting with full lifecycle API management. Today, we're incredibly grateful for CA Technologies, Kraken D, C Data, Software AG, Mosif API Analytics, Cybersecurity Cloud, Salt, Tibco, Nginx, Kong, Tiege Lab, Integration Path, F5, WSO2, Smart Bear, and many others. For integration, we're incredibly grateful to Dalbumi, Fivetran, Informatica, Talend, Matillion, Tipco Cloud Integration, and SnapLogic, just to name a few. And when it comes to low and no code application development and automation, this is where Appian, Mendex, Creatio, OutSystems, Duplo Cloud, um, OneBlink, Simplifier, API-OMAT, AirSlate, and Metafax are very active on the marketplace today. And so I was going to see if there are any other questions, and I would love to dig in more to kind of what Mehdi mentioned before when it comes to distribution. So, for example, continuous API management, right, in your book, in your O'Reilly book you talk a little bit about monetizing APIs. And so I'm very curious in your view, right, when it comes to this sort of model where it depends on how people view a marketplace, right? Some people see it as a distributor, some people see it as a reseller, some people see it as a channel. Um, what are your thoughts, Mehdi? What do you currently see today? So about monetization, it's one of the most asked questions on monetization. Uh, and, and, and yeah, but let's say more and more APIs are now infrastructure APIs, as we call it. So let's say uh, not infrastructure as Amazon, like uh, as virtualized hardware, but infrastructure in terms of business. You know, uh, for example, uh, uh, SMS sending API, payment API, uh, an emailing API, they're kind of a piece of software that represents like some uh, business process as a service, right, directly. So like this, then you have two ways to monetize APIs. You have the service monetization, Right, so what's behind the interface and the interface monetization. So for example, let's just imagine you are weather data system, uh, API, right? So you will you can monetize how, how much the fresh is the data, how much precise is the data, how uh, the, the quantity, like the, the, the uh, how to say that, the, the quality of the data, uh, right? Uh, on a specific like uh, detail. So there is the data part, Right. So I'm just an example. I think it's uh, some financial APIs. The APIs is cheap if you can wait one second. But if you want an, uh, a response less than 300 milliseconds, now it's a lot more expensive because, you know, so like that. So so it's really about the uh, the data itself the ser or the, the service, as we can say. And then you have the interface itself that you can monetize often, as I say, uh, for example, is uh, how much support do you need for the API integration? How much? Uh, uh, let's say uh, the scope, right? The scope of what you can access or not, like how much you are authorized or not authorized. So yes, yeah, so there is really these two aspects of monetization and that makes really, really a complex discussion, right? About exactly what, you make, what you, you make pay. And just to finish, I think we will see more and more infrastructure-like business models where it's really the pay as you go or you pay per request or you pay per... Uh, let's say time of processing a little bit like aws has shown but now for more advanced processes that can be a background check or that can be ai processing or stuff like that that's wonderful i appreciate you sharing your view Mehdi. yes and i think to me the most exciting thing about the aws marketplace as mentioned is it supports not only right monetizing by using apis but also that human aspect, right? Helping uh, people work faster and get access to the tools that they need. So that's you know what I'm currently seeing across the board where when you talk about low and no code, right? It's the level of a um, of you know low code, meaning low code is subjective 
to who is actually going to be doing the coding. And so whenever there's a solution, right, that, that joins the marketplace that says low or no code, right, we ask them to truly talk about all the other benefits to the customer. Because even low and no code as an interface, that's going to be subjective. Because the API as an interface may be considered very high code, right, to a business analyst, but it may be considered very low code to someone who's very used to using an SDK uh, that complements that API. And so I, I feel like that's a very interesting topic. And, and Mehdi, I would look forward to dig into it deeper with you to help the community. Yeah, and but actually, um, so what I understand is that AWS is a the top, let's say, uh, infrastructure as a service for uh, public cloud. Uh, and and what I understand is that AWS, I think the number I remember I've seen it was maybe long. It was like six thousand services directly available on the AWS, but internal Amazon services that has been made out. Right, it was something around that number from what I remember in a presentation. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, let's say that has been inside out, right? And that composed the whole AWS. I'm, again, the, the number I'm not totally sure, but I've seen that in a presentation at least. Um, the thing is, AWS, even it, it, it's really big, cannot address all the services that every company or every people need. Exactly. So you got it. Yes. It, yeah. You're opening it for people to say, okay, this is a niche market for niche service, but at least I will put it here, it will be easy to consume, right? Yeah, so I let me address the elephant in the room. You're absolutely right. I'll give you an example, right? Honeycode is AWS's low code solution, which was launched last June. It's not gonna solve every company's problems under the sun. So it's very natural for us to talk about companies like OutSystems and Appian and Creatio that offer right low code solutions built on AWS that are very robust you know, and have very specific use cases that the customer's looking for. Same thing with iPaaS, right? AWS per se today, right, isn't in the business of iPaaS, which is why it's fantastic for, you know, companies not, like SnapLogic, right, and Informatica to be able to say, oh, you know, this is going to solve the customer's problem and iPaaS includes API management and things like data integration, right? Same thing with like Boomi solution, where they've already got those pre-built connectors in there that makes it easy for those connections to happen, but it's going to be complementary, right, with the fact that most likely customers have the Amazon API gateway as well, yeah. and it's it, you know it's not conflicting. And so, Medi, you 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 absolutely nailed it on the head. Where yes, marketplace is truly for third party, you know, ISV not only products but also services where microservices architecture is is often the, the toughest one to get right inside of a company. And so, you know, that type of expertise, being able to bundle that with the product that you're purchasing into one private offer, that's what makes customers really happy. And I was also going to mention that, you know, back in the day when we were at API Days physically, you know, it's very true that not everyone may want to talk to someone in sales. And so the capability to be able to, you know, for example, use like a private marketplace to purchase a product within the company um, that you need, right? That your company says, yeah, you know, you can use this tool. That's incredibly powerful. Yes, and there's a lot of eyeballs already on AWS, right? So it's also great for the search and the discovery because there will be one place to find services that you can consume uh, directly via, via an API, right? Very much, yes. And we encourage, right, for people who are using the API products, now you can publish your APIs in the AWS marketplace to further monetize as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think it makes sense. Uh, uh, it makes total sense. And w w let's say, except on Google search, you know, there is no real place where people look for APIs or services to consume. And so now it seems, yeah, uh, AWS marketplace is the place to be for all these services that uh, uh, that are the long tail, right? The long tail yes. of services, the long tail third party that uh, Amazon like probably cannot could build, but it's they already manage like top ones. So so yeah, so let they open it to others. Yes, yeah, and the final thing I was going to ask for just from the community at large is, you know, as you're using specifically this service and our APIs, right? One of my goals when I came, you know, t here to AWS was to continue to make 
our APIs a better experience so that I can continue to share that knowledge with the community as well, because we're seeing different kinds, you know, all different types of workloads at scale. And so we can then share that experience back to the community. I feel like that's incredibly important that right, the reason you scale is so you can share with everyone so that we all become better at this. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes total sense. So if you monetize APIs directly and services on AWS Marketplace, how that works? Amazon takes a, uh, a fee or there is a, a monthly fee to be to host a service. How does that work? Sure. So it doesn't cost anything to list on the marketplace. And so, you know, it's going to depend on that particular ISVs, like their partner designations and how that organization wants to go to market and how they want to sell. So it's going to be very specific to that ISV and it's a scalable model. And so I'm happy to talk to anyone who's interested in that. I also am interested in the buyer side, right? Because, you know, in the ecosystem, there are many people and we built the service for customers, right? So it exists so that Medi, you and I can go there and say we need security or we need observability. Right. The whole point was for us to have a more streamlined experience. And so that is actually the pull to why people want to be a part of that ecosystem is because customers are saying to me, right, Emmeline, hey, there's this particular thing that I want to procure. You know, when is it going to be available on Marketplace? So I was just going to mention it's incredibly customer driven. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, often in the, when I talk to top executives about APIs and I say, look, you will build many, many APIs internally, right, that for internal consumption. But you know what? Maybe one of them will be a, a critical piece of infrastructure or software that you may give to others, you know, customers, partners or ecosystem and you are able to monetize. So it seems now there is a marketplace for that, you know, as a try, you know, you can actually from all your internal services, uh, you can say actually, oh yeah, let's try these whatever two, three, four, four ones, which we think are really product that other people wants to consume or may consume. Let's put them on the AWS marketplace. Let's promote them across the AWS community, uh, practitioner community, and let's see how it takes. Yes, does that and then make the, sense? it is, and then we give back, right? So many of the ISVs and AWS together, we offer um, free AWS credits to help reimburse people who are are trying those products. And so that's another, you know, lower risk way for people to be able to try more tools um, and to see, you know, what's going to help a, an API project move along a little bit faster or in a more sophisticated way. And so I was just going to mention, you know, that piece is important. And the key benefit to why people actually uh, purchase off of Marketplace is the idea of cloud, some, uh, sorry, cloud commit drawdown. So meaning large customers will typically have a commitment right to AWS. And when they're purchasing products and services through the marketplace, it will actually draw down that uh, commitment, which then absolutely helps the customer to save money and to meet that commitment. Yeah, we have a last question on SLAs. Oh, Does yes. That mean, yeah, if you are in AWS, you put a service on the marketplace, uh, is the SLA uh, guaranteed and, or by the AWS platform? So when you say SLA, do you mean the delivery of the product itself? Yeah, the, the availability of the service. You know, if it's hosted on AWS and you have a, I don't know, 99.95% because you are an AWS customer. Oh, I see what you're mean, saying. Does that mean you can directly provide a service that is 99.95 SLA? Yeah, so I think I would have to get back to um, you know the person who answered that question because I want to make sure I understand it a little better. I don't want to answer incorrectly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mainly because as you know, with cloud, there's the, the shared responsibility model, and so it yeah. sounds like there's more to the question that I would love to understand. Yeah, that's good. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, Emily. Thank uh, you, Medi. Uh, for this, uh, we had uh, some good questions. And uh, yeah, I um, will be glad to invite you again to talk about this API distribution and service distribution because it's really important. A lot of people would love to uh, distribute API and test uh, their value proposition, but some of the time the cost to put it on the web and with a portal and everything is, is really too high. So now if there is a solution that lower that, that risk, that's great.
That's wonderful. Thanks for having me, Mehdi. I really appreciate you and everyone. Thanks so much. Yeah, we appreciate you too. We highly appreciate you too. So uh, yeah, always invited at the PIDs. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you. Have a great session, everyone.